Cape Talk. Call 021-446-0567. 11 minutes past two. Welcome back to Cape Talk. Over the last couple of years, with load shedding being in full swing, there's been an increase in fires in buildings and apartment blocks that are caused by power surges or appliances left on during blackouts and other electrical issues. Uh, Sometimes the fire will occur uh, on two or three floors above the apartment that you live in, and then the entire building can be condemned, leaving you homeless. This is what happened to a young apartment owner Uh, when a fire broke out in her block in December last year, not too far from our Cape Talk offices. She then found herself unsupported by the property agents who manage her block and very much in the dark, so to speak, with regards to who was responsible for paying for her rent while the block was being assessed. Um, She was also not allowed to enter the block to get her things for a long period of time, which was very distressing. Here's a voice note uh, from this Uh, young property owner. Having your building on fire I think is one thing that doesn't really cross your mind that much. Well for me it never did Um, but December 2022 two weeks before Christmas in the middle of my work day receiving a notification on JWI news that there was a fire in my building was the last thing I ever thought I would be seeing. Um, And it has been six months and we are still not home. Our building has been deemed unsafe by the city of Cape Town. There's been many delays in the process. And through all of this, myself and many other homeowners have been left homeless. it's, it's been an emotional roller coaster. It's been traumatic. Um, it's been very difficult to cope with, not knowing from one day to the next when we will be going home. What's really difficult is when there's a lack of communication between all parties, the trustees, the managing agent, insurance brokers, assessors, Everybody just throws you from one to the next and you don't get any solutions. And, and I think for me, that's been something, been my biggest challenge navigating through all of this is all the learning that I've had to do from the insurance point of view, the difference between content and structural insurance that our um, levies covered the structural and the structural that's everything if you tip your house upside down so having alternative accommodation covered should be done that only was paid out to us four months after the fire Um, but where do we stand with in terms of your trustees but as as a homeowner I've really had to seek um, legal advice from other sources to figure out what are my rights, where do I stand, and when things go wrong, who do you turn to? That was the voice of a young homeowner um, who's been out of her home for over six months after the block of flats that she owns an apartment in was evacuated and deemed unsafe for uh, the inhabitants to return uh, after an apartment three floors above her was burnt out in a fire um, through it's what sounds like a lack of a communication between all the parties, but between the managing agents and the trustees and the body corporate, she was uncertain of her rights and um, when she will be returning home, really. If you've been through a, a, a situation like this or um, you've had a good or bad experience, we'd like to hear from you. You can call us on 021-446-0567 or you can send us a voice note or WhatsApp to 72 1567 I've invited property administrator Cheryl Nairn from CN Buy Properties to talk us through what the responsibilities are of the managing agents of the body corporate electric trustees when a fire occurs in a sectional title block, as well as to educate us about the role of the property management agents. Um, I welcome to the show, Cheryl. Good, good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me to the show. Um, just to give a starting point of 
managing agents. They are basically the people that do all the work for you. Um, as far as the trustees are concerned, they are responsible. You give them that responsibility when you vote them on at your AGM to look after you as the body corporate and to look after you as, as the actual owners of the whole block. So as with Kirstie's experience, well, with the young lady's experience, um, the agent, the managing agent should have contacted her and asked her if there was any way that, that she could be assisted. It should, they should have contacted all the owners that were involved, sent out a general email saying, this is the situation, we will then take it from here. Basically, they would get hold of the insurance company. The assessor would go onto site immediately after the fire starts. The managing agent would be on site when the fire is, when they are there, the fire department, if they are possibly in the area to do that. We do that on our side. We've had one or two fires where that has been the situation. So we've gone in, we've um, assisted where we could immediately. Thereafter, the assessor will be the one that is the most important one that will go around and assess what is going on. The fact that the whole block was condemned means that it's too dangerous for anyone to go in to collect anything. So they <coughs> would only be distraught because they wouldn't have any of their own personal possessions with them. Um, they would be allowed to go in if they make an appointment with the managing agent, with the trustees, with the assessor, everybody needs to know. So basically it is a big role of communication between all parties. You cannot be left out. The trustees cannot just walk away from a situation. They need to be part of it. That is their job. That is their role. They take on the responsibility of all the owners when they are elected as trustees. Thanks, Gerald, for clarifying for your role. I also want to bring into the conversation now, we've also invited Ernest North, who is the co-founder of digital platform Naked Insurance. Um, mm. uh, welcome to the show, Ernest. Uh, what is what, what is your role as an insurance uh, assessor? Hi, Bianca. It's nice to be on the show. Yes, I think it's, it's worth saying, um, I mean, first of all, it sounds like a really, really bad experience and, and, and something that is certainly traumatic. So I want to say to the extent that that, listener uh, has not been helped i'll i'll give my contact details afterwards to your producer as well i really want to get in touch with her and and if she has further needs further assistance i'll really be be, be glad to help out i think the, the important thing here is that to distinguish between buildings and content insurance firstly is important the, the 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 tenant or the owner buys their own content insurance but the body corporate, or if they outsource that to the managing agent, is responsible for buying the building's insurance. Typically, the building's insurance policy includes an alternative accommodation benefit in the case where the building itself is uninhabitable. Now, because a block of flats is one building, even if the fire occurred in one unit, if there are other units that are uninhabitable, that alternative accommodation benefit should go towards everybody in that block of flats that can't access the unit. And so the broker in this case should have made sure that immediately, immediately. that benefit should, should have been made available to all those other owners. Mm. But obviously, through lack of communication, and I suppose in a very big block, each case is different. Um, you know, there's one flat that's been burnt down completely, and the other apartments are uh, perhaps have like smoke damage or soot damage or water damage. Um, and so each flat needs to be assessed. But I suppose if the whole building is condemned, the people who, who live there need immediate access to those funds. Uh, absolutely. And, and I think it's worth saying again that in, in most cases, the the trustees are people that don't get remunerated for their for their effort. Those are typically just other uh, owners. Uh, and so what they do is they pay a professional fee on a monthly basis for the managing agent to look after the interests uh, of all the owners and to administer the property, like your previous guest uh, perfectly explained. But in many cases, there's an actual insurance broker involved as well. And so to the extent that owners feel that this financial product, which supposedly they have of insurance, if it's not delivering, they should formally complain to that broker. And if it's not being dealt with, they should formally uh, complain to the ombud. Uh, this, this is an example of where clearly the, 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 the benefits of insurance 
should be available immediately because by definition you need alternative accommodation immediately. And if you're not getting that, then then that is a clear ground uh, for, for a very strong case of a complaint. So it's interesting that you say the trustees um, of who sort of run the body corporate and are elected by the owners aren't paid for what they do. But at, in the same breath, a lot of, Cheryl, I'll bring you in here, a lot of um, people who live in blocks try to kind of shirk off that responsibility as well and just don't come to meetings. Talk about how important it is to familiarize yourself with your trustees and the small print on your contracts. Yes, that is vitally important. I'm finding uh, since COVID, we've had less and less people showing an interest in coming to meetings, um, in looking at documentation, especially the insurance policy, because I think that is the most invital, the vital policy that we deal with at the meeting, explaining every single time the fact of that you've got to have household insurance plus that insurance. That is important. The fact that they need to understand what responsibilities they are giving to the trustees to do and what responsibilities they are giving to us to do. Who is their direct communication when a situation happens? Those are things that we explain at every single meeting. When the trustees have meetings, they are also can be invited to come to those meetings to get educated on what is going on in the building and what is happening in the entire block. It's vitally important that they as owners also know what is going on um, because it just brings about a synergy that everybody's working together at the end of the day, not just the trustees doing all the work and the managing agent doing all the work. The owner should also be involved. Ernest, perhaps you should tell us a little bit about what that unified sort of structural insurance that's covered by levies actually covers. I mean, I know we, it, there's that concept of you, if you turn the uh, apartment upside down, whatever falls out and that, that, that doesn't apply. But what about something like uh, smoke damage and soot, which gets absorbed into the structure? Uh, is that covered by um, structural insurance usually? Absolutely, that's a very good question. So, the so the, the the building's insurance policy, which the which the body corporate or typically the managing agent or their broker buys on behalf of all the owners, that building's insurance policy covers anything uh, sudden and unforeseen that happens to the building itself, i.e., the structure, uh, the walls, the roof, that sort of thing, or any permanent fixtures to your to your actual unit. So, if you've got carpets in or you've got permanent light fittings, or you've got an installed stove. Those Mm. things are all permanent parts of your your unit. And to the extent that they are damaged by something something sudden and unforeseen, like a hailstorm or a fire, or even smoke from from a unit next door, or water from a unit next door, those things, even though they're inside your unit, are covered by that building's insurance policy, which is bought on behalf of all owners. I mean, that's basically why we pay insurance for the unforeseen circumstances, right? Absolutely. And, it, and I mean, the, the other thing worth saying, just to, to, to support what Cheryl is saying, it's important that owners, even though they are passing that responsibility on to the body corporate to buy that policy, it's important that they understand that policy for two reasons. The one is, if there's an excess to be paid, they still have to pay, you, you as the individual owner still have to pay the excess. So make sure that you understand that you're comfortable with that excess and challenge the body corporate if you think it's wrong. But secondly, the, the, the value that each individual unit is insured for should be tweaked slightly to represent how much that individual unit is worth. So the best example that, we've, that we're seeing recently is if you individually are putting in alternative power solutions, either a solar panel or an inverter or something that becomes a permanent part of your unit, that item should be insured as part of the building cover. So you should let the body corporate or their broker know that you have made an improvement to the build, to, to, to your unit and you should then theoretically pay the five or 10 or 20 rand extra a month uh, through your levy because your unit is now worth more and you have more insurance cover. My guest is Ernest North, co-founder of digital platform Naked Insurance, and Cheryl Nan from CNBY Property Management, um, telling us about the owner's rights when a disaster does strike on a block of flats with sectional title ownership. Um, Cheryl, how often should the property managers and trustees be re-looking their policies? 
and updating well, we, them. Okay. As Ernest so rightly said, if they because of the uh, inverters that are being installed into units at the moment, those things need to be addressed immediately when that is done. We look at the policies as the agent once a year, the managing agent once a year. We Update it. When units are transferred and sold, that's when the policy again gets looked at to see what is happening. When there's a change in the costings of hot water cylinders, um, we're finding that we're replacing hot water cylinders and we're seeing that the COC document, which is the certificate, the certificate for uh, the hot water cylinder, mm. needs to be redone. Then we increase that to what the market is. Say it was eight and a half and we're seeing that the market price is now at ten and a half. That would be done automatically and that would be done with the with the trustees at a meeting we would say we need to increase this we need to do that so those are looked at constantly but the entire policy get looked at once a year overall to see what is going on on the policy okay so annually it should be re-looked yes. at and Ernest, tell me is it are you seeing more fire damage claims of since load shedding it is a, it is definitely something where where we are seeing a lot more claims that are as a result of the the failing long-term infrastructure. And so by what what I mean by that is, as uh, appliances and electrical systems are increasingly exposed to this unnatural process of being switched on and off, uh, the, the overall lifetime of electrical systems, installations in general, but also of individual appliances, is definitely going down. And so we're seeing, unfortunately, a significant increase in, in claims for items like that. And then as a secondary effect uh, in fires, luckily we've, we've, we've not had that many fires. Uh, and, and, and unfortunately, this, use, this listener that sent in this voice note is one of the very few, but they're unfortunate. And the reality is it does happen from time to time. But I think in the changing environment that we're in, it's even more important for people to realize the importance of the risk management of insurance, uh, not, just for, not just for protecting your financial asset, but in the understanding that as uh, the, the, the structure of items change or the risk to that those items are changing, uh, your, your physical safety is at play as well. Do you need to report to your insurance broker things like if you install solar or if you have an inverter? Are policies changing with, with, with load shedding rules? Yes. Policies, are not, policies are not changing that much in terms of what is covered and what isn't covered. I mean, the one area that is quite, quite a bit of debate at the moment is the fact that once there is national grid failure, there is no cover uh, that's related to that at all. But for the most part, normal load shedding and normal power surges are, from most insurers, still covered. Do but you need to have a surge protector on your fridge? Or I've, I've, I've read something about that. that. That's a good question. It depends on your individual policy. Some policies say you only have cover if you have a surge protector. Some are, are put of higher excess if you don't, that sort of thing. So go read your individual policy. But I think the most important question that you asked is, do you need to tell your insurer? The, most, the thing that most people get wrong is not, is not whether they told them about it, but whether they specify the right value of cover in total. And so if, you are, if your home is insured for 2 million rand, but you now install a 100,000 rand uh, alternative energy system, make sure that you up or increase your level of cover because all, otherwise any claim you have will be subjected to the fact that you were underinsured in total. I think that's great advice. Thank you, both of you, for your time today and enlightening us on the rights of the property owner.